as of 2004, Kolkata received 1,209 million liters of water per day through the Kolkata Municipal Corporation's supply. With the city's 10 million strong population, about 120 liters of water should be available per person per day. More recent data from the KMC has been hard to find. We get most of the supplied water from the Hooghly River, which abuts the city to the west, facilitated by the Kolkata Municipal Corporation. The journey of this water starts at Farakka, around 400 kilometers from the city. Commissioned in 1972, the Farakka Barrage helps divert adequate quantities of Ganga water to the Bhagirathi Hooghly River system, which also ensures sweet water supply to Kolkata. The water then makes its way to several water treatment plants in the city. Then, this water is distributed for different purposes, including for domestic use. Keeping in mind that the government's Jal Jeevan mission aims to provide safe and adequate drinking water through individual household tap connections to every citizen by 2024, let us look at the current state of water distribution in Kolkata. The quantity of water supplied by the KMC is not sufficient to meet the demands of the city. While the estimated demand of the city is calculated to be 1,262 million litres per day, the KMC is able to supply only 1,209 million litres per day, of which 1,096 million litres is surface water and the remaining ground water. Of the supplied quantity, Nearly 30 to 35 percent of the water is lost. According to the KMC, the two major sources for this loss are leakages in the age old water pipelines, and the other is roadside water taps. The distribution of water in the city is also not equitable. In 2011, there was a study for the Urban Ministry's policy on water supply and distribution in Kolkata. It assumed differing water requirements by different groups of citizens. Water requirements were estimated to be 180 liters per day per person for the resident population, 90 liters for the population living in slums, and 5 liters for the floating population. So, according to recent studies, while the average water consumption figure in the city stands at 200 liters per day, an average person in a slum receives at most 50 liters a day. That too is not delivered directly to them. In the absence of sufficient piped water from the KMC, residents in the city have resorted to several other means to bridge the gap between demand and supply for domestic use of water. Use of community bow wells, digging private wells, relying on municipal water tankers, private water vendors, and small scale private water treatment plants are some examples. However, a lot of the water which is secured by such means imposes a purchasing cost on the consumers. Most of whom are from the economically weaker sections of the city. Thus, for a city in which water is provided by the government to its people free of cost, as citizens of Kolkata do not pay a water tax, its citizens neither receive equal quantities of water and nor do they bear similar costs. The poor in the city seem to be subsidizing the amount of water consumed and the cost paid by the richer populations. The recent trends of urbanization have also led to the reduction of wetlands and water bodies in the city. Between 2006 and 2016, Kolkata has lost 46% of its water bodies. From 3,874 ponds, lakes, and canals 10 years ago, the number has dwindled to 1,670. Water bodies now account for just 17.3% of the Kolkata metropolitan area. This has had direct implications on groundwater. Falling water table levels and deteriorating quality of groundwater, turning brackish in some places and exposing citizens to high levels of geogenic contaminants like iron and arsenic elsewhere, thereby making local sources of water unavailable to the citizens. To reduce the dependency on groundwater and to bridge the gap between demand and supply of water, The KMC is making infrastructural upgrades to increase the number and capacity of water treatment plants across the city. Whether the distribution of this water will be equitable in the near future is something that remains to be seen. 
How is water distributed in your city? Is it just? Can we imagine an alternate vision of our cities where access to water is more equitable? In the next part of the series, we will explore where the water goes when we are done using it. Do the inequalities which plague the supply and distribution of water extend into the sewage infrastructure of the city too?